Hello everybody, I'm back with part two of the logger prone graphing uh, videos. So this time I wanted to tell you or show you how to do best fit, uh, best fit lines in uh, logger pro and how to do and as well how to do what's called uh, linearizing and making maximum and minimum best fit lines uh, for a set of data. So I'm going to start with this data here that looks pretty linear. Um, We'll just show how we can get how we can get a uh, best fit line. So I'm going to go to this button right up here. This is the curve fit. This is where all the fits lie. There's also a linear fit button, but I think it's better to go do the curve fit every time so you get used to it because you're going to need it for the more complicated uh, relationships you're going to experience. Now in this window, it shows a little graph of the data, a little uh, preview graph of the data. It's got two fit types, automatic and manual. Right now we want automatic, but we'll come back to manual later. Down here, it's got all the different equations it can fit to, and there's a big number, there's a, there's a huge number of them. But what we want right now is linear. Linear is usually a good place to start. You don't want to start with proportional, even though that's linear, because it specifically goes through zero and zero. Ideally, in the end, when we linearize, we'll get something that is proportional, but let's just start with linear first. Uh, in fact, if you think it's proportional, I still recommend using linear because that can show if you are, say, slightly off from linear, how, like slightly off from proportional, how far off are you from proportional, which could then, you know, you could then try proportional later on. So I've chosen this linear. It's giving me some coefficients, but I want to try to have Logger Pro automatically make its, uh, its coefficients. So I'm going to do trifit. And you can see it's made a line of best fit here. It has some numbers for the coefficients. And I'm going to, and a correlation coefficient as well. And I'm going to create that and hit OK. And now what you see is you get this, uh, this little window up here. You get the, the line for Logger Pro. You get the boundary of where it's uh, checking the data. Uh, and you can also have it, uh, by the way, do a linear fit based on only some of your data, which can come in handy in some uh, types of uh, problems, uh, sometimes the labs. Um, I'd say particularly anything where you've got a collision because you're going to have something going at one speed before and at a different speed afterwards. Uh, and they should be going at constant velocities, just the, the velocity will suddenly change. So I've got this linear fit, it's got the equation. now. One of the things that I got here here is I'm looking at this and it's too, it's too small. I'm going to double click on this to bring up some of the options. I want to change some of the options on here. There's okay, so, so uncertainty, show on graph, use entire range. I want appearance. I could change the size of the font. I'm going to bump it up to 16. That should be good. And click OK. Now that going into the options on that is something we're going to do again later. But now you can see we've got the slope and it's got a plus minus to it. We've got the y-intercept, it's got a plus minus. We've got the correlation and something called the root mean squared error, the RMSE. Correlation is usually what you want to focus on with these lines of best fit. Uh, if you need more information on that, check with your, uh, check with your math teacher or look at your uh, math textbook about uh, correlation coefficients. And I think I also mentioned that in one of my previous uh, log, uh, Excel and graphing videos about what it means by the correlation. Very quickly, if the correlation is close to 1 or negative 1, depending on if it slopes up or down, that is a really good fit to the data. Uh, if it's close to 0, that means it's basically random and there's no real correlation between the x and y variables, whatever they are. So this looks, this is pretty close to 1. It's looking very linear. I've got a slope and a y-intercept. All looks pretty good. I can use this for my equation. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm going to re-enter some new data. I'm going to pause this for a second, re-enter some data and show you how to get the curve fit for something a little bit different. So one moment and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've got some new data put in. Now this data shows a very different relationship. This is definitely not linear. If you look at this, yeah, that's not linear at all. Uh, just try to adjust this a little bit. Uh, no, I think that's okay. Yeah, definitely not linear. Uh, it seems to be curving down. Now, if you, I think it's a good idea to try to 
uh, look at all the different types of relationships you might experience. There's, you know, linear proportional, uh, you know, linear proportional, you know what those look like. But keep in mind what, uh, anytime you see an equation in physics, I think it's a good idea to graph that type of equation. For example, uh, you know, you do, uh, we do projectile motion. That's all based on parabolas. It's based on x squared. So do a graph of y equals x squared and try changing some of the parameters on it. Do a, uh, do a, a polynomial equation, uh, uh, a quadratic equation rather, um, and change the parameters on it in your graphing calculator. See what it looks like so you can get a feel for when the dots on your graph form a certain pattern. You should be able, uh, if you try to familiarize yourself with the different equations you're going to experience, then you're going to have a better job or, or better experience uh, being able to recognize when your data is fitting one of those types of equations. Right now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this looks like it might be inverse, like based on 1 over y equals 1 over x, or it might be inverse squared. I'm not sure which. And I have a recommendation of how you do this. And if you've seen Excel and uh, my Excel and graphing videos, you'll know what I'm, or you'll have an idea of what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the power curve. The power curve is a times x to the power of b. The a doesn't really matter. It's the b we're going to use for sort of a diagnostic. We're going to, the idea is whatever b shows will tell us what our, uh, what kind of equation we're working with. Because most equations are, you know, either like y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, or y equals 1 over x, 1 over x squared, or uh, something like that. Uh, you know, unless we've got something like exponential or logarithmic, which we don't often in physics, um, it's going to be something like that. And trying to figure out what that power is, like is what's going on with x, is most of what we need to do. So I'm going to use the power curve. I'm going to try fit. And it looks like it's uh, a I can ignore, but it looks like b is to the power of negative 2, which is kind of interesting. And that correlation, ooh, that correlation coefficient is pretty good. Let me uh, increase the size of this one more time. Make it a little easier to see, a little easier to read. There you go, y equals x to the power of b. And we've got a b as negative 2.006. That's really close to negative 2. And since I thought it would be inverse or inverse squared, I know that when we're talking about inverse squared, 1 over x squared, what we're really talking about is x to the power of negative 2. And that's what I've got right here. So this best fit equation is telling me that my equation is based on uh, 1 over x squared. Now, the thing with physics is this is not going to be enough. We don't have enough parameters in this. Uh, we don't know what a is. And we don't know if there's some extra stuff that should be multiplied maybe up here with b. We don't really know what's going on. Um, so what I'm going to do is do something called linearizing. A linear graph is great because there are only two parameters. If you linearize, you can find those parameters directly. Uh, and the to go a little bit into like, some of the computer stuff just very quickly, the linear graph is the easiest one for a computer to get a really good line of best fit for. Everything else is much more complicated, and it's more prone to error. So you want to try to make your data as try to get your data to be linear. It also it also helps you demonstrate that the equation you think is right is right. If, the, if you can linearize, if you can make a linear graph out of your data by manipulating your data and get the linear graph you expect and get all the parameters you expect, then you know your equation is right. So let's try doing that now. We know we're working with uh, 1 over x squared. So we're, we're working with the idea that y is equal to uh, x to the power of negative 2. y equals 1 uh, or k over x squared, okay? Okay. I could type these in, but instead, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a new calculated column. So I'm going to go into data, new calculated column. And I'm going to call this 1 uh, inverse inverse square x, x power 
make two units. We're going to leave the units out. I haven't put any units on this one. It's going to be the expression is one divided by column is x to the power of two. So I'm writing in the expression here. And that's going to create a column where every one of them is calculated. And actually, this matches up what I had back here. Take a look. Numbers match. 1, 1, 1 0.25, 1. Anyway, so we've got all these values in here. So now, once I've made my calculated column, the rest of it gets pretty simple. Down here in x, I'm going to change x to follow inverse square x. It's got the tooltip stuck on that. There we go, inverse square x. I'm going to click that, and now all the data is in one place. I'm going to auto scale this again, auto scale graph, to have it fit all of the all of the data there. And I'm going to change, I'm going to delete this curve fit, because I need a new one. And the curve fit is going to be linear again. Here we go, try fit. And there we go. We've got a slope of 10.02 and a y intercept of Actually, let me double -check, click this. And make that bigger. Okay, there we go. And we've got a uh, slope and y intercept here. The y intercept, or the slope is 10.02. The y intercept is actually very close to zero. I mean, that's pretty close to zero, I'd say. And the correlation is almost 1.000. In fact, uh, Although, in fact, when I checked it in the curve fit, it was something like 0.9999 something or other. Anyway, this is very close to, this is very linear. Um, and it looks like we've got a good data set. There's only one problem. All of our data points are clustered down here. There is a lot of them down at the bottom, not a lot of up near the top end. And that can sometimes make your data kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is show you another way to calculate this out, but it uh, looks like we're starting to, looks like we're hitting around 12 minutes, so we'll have to save that for the next video. Um, thanks for watching.